Hey everybody, my name is Loren Brady and I'm an artist uh, living in the Lansing area and I'm really grateful to Reach Studio Art Center for asking me to share a little bit about my studio practice and um, how I create my arts and I'm also really grateful to you all for tuning in and uh, listening to me speak about these things. Um, in the coming images and video, you'll see um, a lot of my work, a lot of my studio space, which is the, the room I'm in right now. And um, my works are primarily in oil paint on either panel or paper. And I also use oil pastel, soft pastel, and charcoal on top of the oil paint. Um, so here we go. I thought that it would be the most fitting to start out with um, a photo of the entranceway to my space. And um, I'm really fortunate to have a studio that's inside my house, um, especially during this global pandemic when many of us are finding ourselves stuck at home and, and not going into work. It's been really lovely that I can just take off my slippers, put on my studio shoes, walk through a doorway, and I'm ready to get down to business and, and paint. Um, my studio is um, a little bit crowded, uh, a little cluttered and very cozy. And I, I tend to be the most creative when there's a bit of chaos, a bit of mess surrounding me. Um, I'm just, I've never been one of those like overly organized uh, people. My painting palette's a disaster. Uh, my desk is typically um, piled with papers and books. And um, that's just how I, how I work best. Um, the bookshelves that you see are filled with texts um, old, that are old exhibition catalogs, um, textbooks, poetry books, um, just things that I like to have around for when I when I need inspiration. So typically before I start painting, I read at least one poem um, just to get into the headspace, um, the abstract language from poetry, the reduced language, the um, strong imagery really helps me um, like mentally prepare for painting. Um, there's a lot of commonalities in um, the written space and the uh, painted space. And um, some other things that you'll see around my studio as you look through these photos is um, that I have a lot of things on walls. So I collect exhibition postcards and uh, pages from magazines and some artwork from friends. I like to have objects and um, artworks that inspire me around me at all times. Um, I, I can't talk about my studio without mentioning my studio assistant, who is my dog, Molly. Uh, she's a, a seven-year-old German Shepherd mix, and since she was a puppy, she's always been with me when I've been painting. And um, I like to joke that this studio space is basically hers. It's like 75% uh, hers, 25% mine, and I'm just paying the rent. Um, she is always at my feet when I'm painting. She likes the, the natural light in my studio. Um, so she lays in the sunbeams as I'm at my desk. Um, as I've been teaching, I teach in my studio sometimes for um, my, my drawing one class. And uh, she'll be in my, my classroom with me. <laughs> um, and she is she expects to be in my studio when I'm working. And there's been a few times where I've, I've closed the door to keep her out just because I've been shuffling paintings around and she just would be in the way, laying in the middle of the floor. And um, I have a clip in here of her being a little upset that I kicked her out of her room, of her space. And she slowly and very sadly um, nudges the door open. Um, so I'm very grateful for the support and encouragement of my studio pup. Um, whenever I'm working. Um, something else that you'll notice in my studio is that I have uh, several shelves with smaller works, and then I also have um, wall space where I, ha I have larger scale. Um, so my work typically moves between um, any anywhere like one inch by one inch, like small little tiny torn pieces um, to four foot by four foot paintings. Um, the The works that you see on shelves, these are mainly, actually most of the work that you see in these images are, are works that I've done um, since March. Um, and the smaller pieces specifically um, are 
things that I've seen going about my daily life that strike my attention, that um, stop me in my tracks. So I'll be taking the dog for a walk or hiking or going to the store. And there's like this bit of trash on the ground that is so, the color palette is so beautiful um, that I'll take a photo or I'll do a quick sketch. And then immediately when I get home, I, I feel this um, compulsion to paint. So it's almost like this obsessive thing where I have to capture this moment before it, it passes. Um, so a lot of these small works are things that I've, I've seen around my yard, um, especially because I've been home a lot. So I've been seeing how, um, you know, time right now, which is so strange, it seems very slow and also very fast simultaneously, um, seeing the way that um, the snow melted, revealing these vibrant greens of spring to the warm, um, crispy textures of summer, um, the objects that submerge and sink into the soil during heavy rains. Um, my, I'm finding that my sense of a, my just awareness of my surroundings and my observational skills have been heightened um, during this pandemic. And therefore, I've, I've created a lot of small works that are sort of um, trying to preserve the transitory. Um, I also like working at the small scale because they feel very intimate. So, um, you know, whereas larger works, it, it's more of a physical like process to make. The smaller pieces, I can sit down on my stool and have a painting in my on my lap, or I can hold it in my hand and have a paintbrush in the other hand, and I can just work on it um, very very quickly and very closely. And there's something really precious about that, that I'm meditating on these moments that are, are fleeting um, in a quiet studio space um, with this panel in my hand. Um, and I, I also like to think of these um, smaller works as objects. So they, they feel very object-like. The, the panels that I, oft, I paint on are... Um, about one and five eighths of an inch deep. So they have a thickness about them. They stand out from a wall. They have a, a presence. Um, they feel very much like, um, like, an, like an object, like a souvenir as preserving um, and thinking about storage and the stories that um, these objects, these paintings hold on to. So whereas my my smaller works are like I would say like quiet meditations with um, specific a very specific um, observation or interaction um, that has occurred like in the not so distant past uh, so something that um, I I saw earlier in the day or a few days ago that I I quickly painted my larger works tend to be more. Um, more about memory and about merging memories and particularly how um, those memories that are tied with the landscape. Um, so in the, the larger works, I think about the, like the geotagging system of the brain where we're um, a, in a location and a certain like smell or sight or a sound, something triggers an episodic memory and we're both like in this present moment, but also um, moving back to wherever that memory is. And so there's like this um, simultaneous push and pull in, in spaces where um, like in, in a particular moment and looking, looking back, looking somewhere else. Uh, so in my works, I like to um, merge and meld and um, combine imagery, um, but, but that's all connected through this particular memory that I'm um, really thinking about in, in creating this. So I, I often work from reference photos. I'm always taking photos anytime I, I travel and, um, you know, through just like any daily ordinary task, I'm always photographing and, and taking notes on um, what I'm, I'm seeing, what I'm feeling. And so then when I'm approaching a, a new painting, I, I reflect on these moments and then I begin and um, I let it, it it starts to shift where I'm no longer, once I get into the process, I'm not just focusing on this particular memory, but I'm letting it become something more and I'm reacting to the surface qualities and each mark um, becomes another move to another direction, another um, potential story. And 
so much like a memory evolves and changes over time, my paintings are this process of a particular starting point that's a catalyst and then the work carries me somewhere else. Um, and it's always tied to the landscape. It's always tied to um, sort of this emotional attachment to daily life and, and ordinary occurrences. But it becomes bigger. It becomes um, more monumental, these these quiet quiet tender moments when they're um like blown up on a, a four foot by four foot panel um and so yeah I'm really really fascinated with mark making and carving into the painted surface and thinking about the indelibility of memory the things that are just ingrained in our minds versus like the soft and, and subtle and drips and how those are reminiscent of the things that are fuzzy and slipping and sliding away through time um, and then also, you know, comparing that to the landscape and the the ever evolving and shifting and changing. Um, so there's a lot that comes into the works and it's a mixture of like planning and uh, preparation and then also just working intuitively um, to what is most compelling and most interesting in the, the surface as I'm working. Um, so I wanted to take just a quick moment at the end of this uh, studio visit to talk about the two works that I have in the silent auction for Reaches and Not So Silent Nights. And um, these two smaller paintings are similar to what I talked about earlier in um, my studio visit where they're meditations on specific memories and experiences. So one of the pieces um, is based on my experience hiking the Narnia Trail in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan this past fall. and. It was so quiet and isolated and dense, and it felt like the woods were closing in around me. Um, and then the other piece that I have in the auction was uh, created in 2019, and you'll notice that this one has um, the vestiges of architecture and um, some woods and w scenes of like water sort of moving in and out of the, the piece. And this one was loosely based off of my experience at an off-grid residency in Vermont. Um, so I hope you enjoy these works. I hope you check out the rest of the amazing artwork in the auction. We're um, a part of a community that has a ton of talented um, and generous artists. So we're, we're quite fortunate. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to, to briefly mention is, um, you know, a little bit about why I think reach is so important. Um, so for some reason, the art world has this uh, reputation of being um, unwelcoming, that you need to have an art degree or understanding of art history, or maybe you've, you've uh, studied studio arts before, so you have I, you know, an understanding of the technical um, methods of, of making to really get into the arts. And these barriers exist for, I'm not sure what reason, um, because it's the exact opposite of what art is about. Art is about um, exploring um, ways of using color and mark and layering and materials to convey a message, to communicate with others, to learn about yourself, to learn about your surroundings. And maybe you create to, um, you know, to to better understand those things, or maybe you just create because you love to make a mess and you love color and you love um, trying out new things. And that's exactly why Reach Studio Art Center exists, to foster community um, and to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to, um, to make a mess and to try out different materials and methods and um, learn how to express yourself and unleash that inner artist um, inside you that we, we all have. And the cool thing about Reach is that it's not, so yes, it's a space, it's a physical location where we can go and we can make and everybody can go and make, um, but it, it's not just about that location, but about the impact that that location has on everyone. Um, the relationships that students make with one another, um, the connections that are made within, you know, from artists within the, in, in the community, these things start to permeate beyond the walls of um, the Washington Avenue location and into the fabric of the Lansing community. Um, I think about the Teen Open Studio projects that are all over town that we see, we're able to see and experience art um, every day. And um, I think, you know, what we need now more than ever is um, a location that brings people together, that encourages creativity and expressiveness. 
and uh, reach Studio Art Centers at that location, that spot. So if you're able to give in the season of giving, I encourage you to, um, you know, consider helping reach out, bidding on items in the silent auction, um, maybe just hitting the donate button, and um, yeah, because places like this are really important. Um, so anyways, thank you so much for tuning into my studio visit. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care.